Okay, welcome to Find Truth 88. Today, I want to take you to Psalms chapter 40. You know, I've been thinking a whole lot here recently about where, where are we putting our foundation? I'm just speaking of the church as a whole here. Where are we putting our trust? Where are we putting our reliance? Where are we building our foundation? You know, as, as we look across YouTube today, we see, and, and the church, see, and again, I said this in the last message, I believe, but I'll say it again, that YouTube is just a sample. It's just a sample of what's going on out here in the world. It's just a reflection of what's going on in the churches. It's just a reflection of what's going on in, in the, the professing body of Christ. So we have to really examine ourselves, as the scripture tells us, that we truly be in the faith. And faith is just not some one-time prayer. Because, you know, if we want to know what faith is, then let us go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and see what Jesus called faith. Did Jesus call uh, faith just something that was just kind of an osmosis kind of thought thing? You know, that we receive it by osmosis, no action needed. But, you know, we know that's not true when we go through and read. We see that Jesus addressed the woman with the issue of blood, how she pressed through that crest. See, she heard of Jesus coming and she got up and she took action. She pressed through that crowd, even though she wasn't supposed to even be out there in the public in her condition. She put all that aside and her faith caused her to act and seek after the Lord and press through that crowd and find him. You know, Matthew 7, 7 says, keep asking, knocking, seeking, and the door will be opened. Hebrews eleven six says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. The Amplified Version says, earnestly and diligently seek him. Do you have a desire to know the living God? Say, I understand. I understand about people going to church. I understand about, the, you know, looking holy and the outward appearances and and talking in the King James and praying in the King James, thus saith the Lord. I, look, I understand all that. But here's the deal. Jesus doesn't give a crap about all that garbage. Because the Lord is looking into our hearts. Hello? He's looking into the mirror of our hearts. I believe it was 1 Samuel 16, 7. It says that, that man looks on the outward appearances. But 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 God, he's, he's looking at the heart of man. So yeah, we can play all that church stuff. We can play all those games. We can come on camera. We can be popular and likable. See, we, we live in a, a, in a in a society, in a culture today. It's all about being popular. It's all about being liked. Let me ask you this question. Was Noah popular and liked? Was Daniel popular and liked? Was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego popular in like? Matter of fact, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went against the flow. There was an entire city who was submitting and going along with the king's decree. But these three individuals, they said, no, 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 we will not go with the flow. We're going upstream against the flow. We're going to be the nail that sticks out. We're going to be that, that few who stands up and rocks the boat. You see, and that was something the Lord spoke to me back in 2011. Marcus, you're hanging around the wrong crowd of people. On the internet. You may be preaching truth, but you're hanging around the wrong crowd. You're afraid, Marcus. You're afraid to rock the boat. You're afraid to stand up and speak out. Against these false teachings and these, these false prophecies. You're afraid, Marcus. I want you to stand up. I think about Moses when he was afraid. Oh, Lord, he started making the excuses. I, I, I'm short of speech. Oh, Lord, this. Oh, Lord, that. And he, to the point where he angered God. 
Is that what we're doing today? Are we angering God because we are slow to act on what he has laid on our heart, the purpose and the calling that he's laid on our heart? See, uh, YouTube is all about going with the flow. YouTube is all about likability hmm? and popularity. And see, even today, I don't fit in with all, uh, see, the, the ma majority of these large YouTube channels and these popular up-and-coming stars, these YouTube stars, the people who were, you know, uh, two years ago, they were not even on YouTube, and now here they are. They're just, they're, their channels are exploding. See, I want to tell you something. These are the majority of the people who absolutely don't like me, absolutely despise me. And, it, and it's not because I'm doing anything to them. It's that I'm preaching truth, that I preach repentance, that I stand on the word of God. See, it's so interesting. It's so astounding how many people actually will despise you just for teaching out of the scriptures. But, oh, they, they'll, they'll trust the word. Oh, the Lord, the Lord told me to tell you. The Lord gave me a word last night. The Lord this, the Lord that. The Lord told me, oh, you know, the date of the rapture. And I always like to ask this question. Was that before or after you stuck the syringe in your arm? Was that before or after you fornicated? Was that before or after you walked out on your family? Hello? See, so YouTube's a place where you, you can do all those things and then you show up on camera and you become a star. All the while living in unrepented sin. See, I take this seriously, but believe it or not, I, I, t and I'm not a per. I'm, look, I've made many mistakes in my life, and even today, I'm not perfect. But one thing I can tell you is that I, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I keep asking, knocking, seeking that the door be open, that the that the Lord continues to take me from glory to glory. See, that we can overcome in one area of our life, but then here's another area: the Lord's peeling that onion back. So I'm always seeking the Lord. I'm always asking the Lord for direction. Lord, help me. Help me grow. Lord, help me become a better man. Help me become a better leader. We should always have that attitude. Some people, they have the attitude that they've arrived. Oh, that, that's, that's so, so dangerous. Let me take you here to, to Psalms chapter 40 because we really have to ask ourselves, where are we putting our foundation? Where are we putting our trust? Is our trust in the event of the rapture? Hmm? Or, or, or is, that, is that the only... Is, look, is that the place we're putting our trust in the rapture? Or are we putting our trust in the one who is coming in the rapture? The Savior. Are we putting our trust in the Savior? Or are we putting our trust in the event? And see, the mistake that 99% of YouTube individuals out here, YouTube viewers and teachers are making is that they are putting their trust in the event. They are comforting one another in the event versus, see, and that's 1 Thessalonians 4, 18. I, I hear this verse get butchered by many, many YouTube teachers. And some of these YouTube teachers literally need to be put in a wheelchair and rolled away. It's like enough with that garbage. Enough with your false teaching. Enough with your immaturity. Enough with your illiteracy concerning the word of God. It's time to do, be stuck in a wheelchair and rolled away. Just roll you right down a hill. Just get out of here. Because you're leading too many people astray. I do, I, 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 let me tell you something about me. I do not like seeing people led astray. Because we're talking eternity here eternity is on the line you, you, you don't there's no taking that back okay there's no taking back leading somebody to the lake of fire that's serious stuff so you know some people they you know they want to criticize me about how serious i am sometimes when i come on camera is this a joke w would you laugh about a pilot coming on coming on your airplane drunk or would you be upset back there? If that pilot went back, walked to the back of the cabin or something, and you smelled alcohol on him, would you be laughing and joking? Sarah, Sarah, 
No, you would be the first one rising up and getting angry, talking about, no, he, he's got liquor on his breath. But when it's a YouTube teacher coming on camera stoned or loaded or, lo or, or it, look, maybe they're not stoned. Maybe they're, they're not uh, loaded, but they're a liar, a proven liar. And then here you are, you're cool with it. You're cool with, see, with an airplane crash, if you've got Jesus in your heart, you're saved for eternity. Okay, so leading somebody to the lake of fire is worse than an airplane crash. Now, if you don't have Jesus, then, then that's done. You're done. But what I'm saying is this is more serious than what's going on. See, leading somebody to the lake of fire is more serious than actual life itself. Because we're talking about eternity here. So, again, where are we putting our foundation? Now, I want to share some, some passages with you. That years back, and even today, still today, that gave me hope, that refocused me, that put, put that 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 straightened my path. You know, Psalms one nineteen one hundred five says, "Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path." Not not your favorite teacher, not your friends, not not some chick on camera who's you know, all bandied up and, and, and you're foaming at the mouth over because you think she's so hot. No, it says that the word of God is a, light, uh, is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto my path, our path. Hello? Psalms 19 says that the word of God is sweet. Light. And see, that's one of my favorite verses there. Sweet like honey. Dripping from the honeycomb. Let me get into this here before I ramble on too long. So this is Psalms chapter 40. Verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Out of a miry clay. And set my feet up on a rock and establish my goings. Are you going through a hard time right now? Are you depressed? Are you without hope? Don't look to the rapture. Look to Jesus. Look to the, look to the living word of God. See, the event is not going to give you hope. The one who's coming in the event, the Savior, he's the one that gives hope. Hello? He's the one that we should be looking on to. Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Hmm? Let me continue on here. And he hath put a new song in my mouth. See, some, some of you need a song to sing. Some of you are, are without a song. And, and see, and this is what happens when we are without a song. Is that we end up in idolatry. When we lose our song... We end up in idolatry. When we lose our song, we start following after false teachers and false prophets and heresies. See, and, 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 and Peter called those, Peter called these heresies damnable heresies. In other words, damnable to the pits of hell. So you can follow false teachers. You can follow false doctrines. And they can make you feel good. They can give you a right now feel good. You can put your foundation up on that sand. But when the storm comes blowing in, when it's all said and done, you're going to be blown straight over. Hello? There, there, there is no peace. There is no lasting peace. See, that's, it's only a temporary peace that these false teachers are giving you. It's only a temporary peace uh, being part of that, that clique, that, that, that huge crowd. That, it's like the next wave. But then when that wave's gone, it's like a, it's like a flash in the pan. Woof, and then the smoke clears and it's all gone. But the living word of God, Jesus Christ, that's everlasting. Hello, he is everlasting in our life. And he hath put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. And here it is. Many shall see it. And fear and shall trust in the Lord. In other words, a reverent fear. A reverent trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man, oh, here, this is a key verse here. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. Not your favorite teacher, not your friends, not your cliques, not your pricks, not your flicks. Hello? The Lord. 
Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and respects not the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Respects not the proud and there's many proud individuals who come here on camera. They come on camera all vanity up with their haughty looking eyes. They come on camera with their kids. They come on camera with thus saith the Lord. And I got a little secret for you. The reason they always say thus saith the Lord. Because they don't know. They always, they always got to give a thus saith. Because they don't know what the word saith. Hello? When you don't know what the word saith. Then you got to give a thus saith. You got to just make it up on the spot. Oh I was... I was sleeping last night. What, and again, was that before or after you stuck the syringe in your arm? Oh yeah, I had a dream last night and the Lord told me to tell you. And then when it falls on their face, when that lie falls on its face, here's another sign of a false teacher. They never repent. They say sorry, but saying sorry and repenting, are, those are two whole different things, hello? They never change. They never turn they never, they never change directions. They just give lip service. Oops. Sorry. Oops. I did it again. Whoops. Hmm. I want to take you to Romans 10, 17, which says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, many of you out there are lacking faith. You're lacking courage. Because you don't turn to the word. You're discouraged because you refuse to turn to the Lord. Instead, you, re you choose to turn to individuals. And thank God for those who preach the truth. Thank God for the individuals who come on camera and teach the word of God. But that, that, that does not dissolve you of your responsibility to get into the word of God yourself. 1 Samuel 30 verse 6 says that, David encouraged himself in the Lord. There comes a time where we have to shut the door, turn off the devices, get in the word of God, be still, know that he is God, and encourage ourselves in the Lord. Encourage ourselves in the promises of God. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says that all the promises of God are yes in him and amen in him to the glory of God in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11 says that when his word goes forth, it does not return to his throne void. Again, let me ask the question, where are you putting your trust? Where are you putting your hope? Is it in people? Is it in me? See, I even say this, don't put your trust and hope in me. My job is just to point you to Jesus Christ, to point you into that direction. There comes a place, there comes a time where the crowd's got to stop. There comes a point where the crowd's got to be left at the porch. And then the husband and wife, only two goes into the bedroom for that intimate moment. The crowd doesn't go into the bedroom for the intimate moment with the husband and wife. And see, you have to have your intimate moment with the Lord. Where no one comes in. Not even your spouse. It's just you and the Lord. That, that, that secret place. That quiet time with the Lord. Where you, where you have an intimate uh, moment with the Lord. Where you open up your heart to him. Where you, where, where you stop playing those church games. See, because again, God doesn't care about all that outward appearance garbage. He's looking into our hearts. He's knocking on the door of our hearts. Will we let him in? I even think about 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 16 and 17. When that young servant, when he had woke up, he's, he's with Elijah, Elijah. And he woke up, the young servant, he woke up and he, he, he realized that they were surrounded. And then he turns to Elijah, uh, we're surrounded. He, I mean, he was afraid. And then Elijah's response Oh, oh, young servant, there's, there's more for us than, than against us. And then Elijah prayed, Lord, open his eyes that he can see. And then after Elijah prayed that prayer, that young servant took a second look. 
and that realize that that army that was surrounding them, they themselves were surrounded by chariots of fire. They were surrounded by the army of the Lord God Almighty. But that kind of faith that Elijah had, there, there, there's more for us than against us. He, he didn't even, he, look, he didn't even fear. The Lord told us in Isaiah 41 verse 10, fear not for I am with you. Isaiah 43, fear not. So for when you pass through those valleys, through the rivers, through the fires, I'm with you. Where are you putting your trust? Are you putting it in individuals? Are you putting it in YouTube channels who are illiterate in the scriptures, who don't know how to preach the meat of the word? But they're likable. They're popular. They're cute. They're attractive. They're, they're this. They're that. They know, how to, they know how to gain a following, but yet they're illiterate to the truth. They're illiterate to the word. Have you noticed also here lately in the last several years the, the influx of false women teachers that have flowed into YouTube? And these false women teacher teachers are leading sissy men astray. See, that spirit of Jezebel is flowing into the church today right before our eyes and these sissy men without backbone run after and follow them because they're being comforted by garbage. I will tell you this, garbage does not com comfort me. It is the living word of God, Jesus Christ, who gives me hope and gives me courage. It is not the event of the rapture that gives me hope. It is the Savior who is coming in the rapture who gives me hope. Hello? And see, this is the problem again in the church. I'll, I'll end with this here in Matthew chapter 14. I think about in verse 22 where Jesus, and this was after the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus himself sent the crowds away and sent the disciples across the sea. And what did it say Jesus did? He went apart into the mountain, apart to pray, apart to seek the Lord. We're living in a day we're seeking the Lord has almost become a thing of the past. Let me leave you these two verses here as I, as I go here. Jeremiah 29, 13, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. I leave you with those verses. Until next time, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. May you find the heart and courage to open up your life to Jesus Christ, to seek him, to be honest with him, to put aside all the games and the, and, and, and the church trivias and all this garbage that, that people have surrounded themselves with to stay busy. May you put all that aside and be still and know that he is God. Get into the secret place and seek the Lord and put your trust in the Lord God Almighty as it speaks of in Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Put your trust in the Lord and be like that tree planted by the rivers of waters. Jeremiah 17, 7 also speaks of the same thing. Put your trust in him because God can't lie. You can trust him.